Hey again everyone and welcome back to the world of Ninth Dawn 3. As you make your way through dungeon after dungeon, you'll find your pack filling up with all kinds of ingredients and items that can't simply be used on their own. To help you clear the clutter, this time around we're going to take a look at crafting, showing you how to find the early game crafting trainers and complete their quests to start your path down the road of custom made glory and riches. Cooking allows you to combine edible ingredients at cook fires to create meals that grant bonuses to your character for a short time, such as an HP boost, increased health and SP regeneration, and much more. To get started with cooking, head to Fadi's kitchen in the southeast section of Ashwick and start his making a meal quest. He's missing a secret ingredient he needs and wants you to go get it for him. Thankfully, this is a quick ask. Head up to Medium John's tavern and chat with him. After a bit of conversation, he'll give you the key you need to unlock the area of Ashwick sewers where Fadi's secret ingredient is. You'll find it not far inside, waiting in a chest. Return to Fadi and give him this ingredient, and in return, he'll teach you the smelly broth recipe, which is needed in a quest for another townsperson. With new recipe in hand, let's head over to Fadi's cook fires and give it a try. Like most crafting stations in the game, the screen is split between the crafting interface on the left and your inventory on the right. You can manually drop items from your bag into the pan to experiment with what can be cooked, but when starting out it's easiest to stick with the recipes. Select the recipe button and you'll see a list of everything you currently know how to make. The more you cook, the better you'll get and the more recipes you'll learn. For now we'll select Smelly Broth, which takes one water and one carrot. There are a couple of numbers of note on this screen. First, the number of ingredients required to attempt cooking this recipe is shown in the pan. If we have more ingredients, we're able to click the plus one, 10, and 100 buttons to attempt to make a match of that recipe. Lastly, the result shows the chance you have of successfully cooking the dish. Our first attempt was a failure, but we leveled up our cooking skill enough to learn a few new recipes. Let's collect more ingredients and try again. The goal when cooking is to keep the indicator in the green area under the pan. If it gets too hot or too cold, your success chance can plummet, so try your best at keeping this steady. With luck and patience, you'll create your culinary masterpiece and be that much closer to learning exciting and beneficial new recipes. Alchemy is very similar, but focuses more on using inedible creature parts. Head just west of Fadi's place to find Wizardess Jamea in her alchemy shop. Tell her you'd like to learn alchemy and she'll start you on a quest to collect some snake fangs for your first alchemy recipe. She'll also require 500 gold for the lesson. Thankfully, that's not a hard amount to collect, and you can do that while collecting the snake fangs. To do this, head out of town and go southwest, following the town's wall until you see a bridge crossing the water. Follow that to the west and you'll come across the Serpent Pit Dungeon. As you can probably guess, this is filled with many snakes and is a natural place to collect fangs. In addition, you'll also be collecting rat teeth and gold, both of which will be helpful for creating your first recipe. Just don't venture too deep if you're low level, as some of the stronger enemies further in will make quick work of you. As you're hunting for fangs, a quick tip is to place the item you're collecting on your hotbar. This makes it easy to see when you have enough of that item, so you don't need to keep checking your inventory. Once you have enough fangs, return to Jamea, give her what she asked for, and you'll have completed your quest, leaving the alchemy table at your disposal. This looks similar to cooking and behaves in a very similar fashion, but as I mentioned earlier, uses many inedible monster parts in the process. Different parts can be mixed and matched within the recipes to raise and lower the potency of the item created, so you should always have a use for those random monster bits taking up your pack space. Just like with cooking, the goal in alchemy crafting is to keep the success rate steady and stay in the middle of the meter. The more you create, the better your skills will get and the more recipes you will unlock. Alchemy takes more work to unlock new recipes than cooking, so keep at it and soon you'll build your recipe list. 
Cooking and alchemy are just two of many crafting skills you can learn and master. You'll find more skill trainers elsewhere in the world that will teach you skills such as armor smithing, fishing, magic weaving, and more. Most of these skills require a quest to unlock, so make sure you talk to everyone that you meet. Until then, be sure to hone your cooking and alchemy skills when you're able, as they can be of great benefit in the dungeons of Ninth Dawn 3. Have fun and get crafting!